track four is Bon Iver's Flume. And uh, Justin, as he's also known, um, was someone who was introduced to me by my younger daughter, Melanie, who's a big fan. And uh, the um, track in question uh, was something that, when I heard it, immediately registered. I know there were other tracks uh, that other people liked better, but, but this one um, connected with me. And when I tried to sing it first, um, particularly on the sort of chorus, I felt I could emote a bit. And in fact, throughout the record, I tried to keep, um, where possible, the singing simple and direct and personal. And this, I think, was um, all one take, bar, I think, one word or two words. Peter and Bob, they decided to, to do Flume off our, our my one record, basically. Um, and uh, which, which was really a cool thing for me to hear about. There's a lot of songs in the record that I think could be easily misunderstood, but I think, um, or misinterpreted. Um, but Flume is mysterious enough of a song lyrically and musically that I was really excited to hear his version of it because it's not as direct of a song. It's not like you can just look at the song and be like, this is what this song is about. It's, I think it kind of is a shape shifter in that way. It's like, uh, I'm not a, I'm not ever sure what that song means to me when we play it live for instance where some of the other songs kind of run their emotional course and it's sort of done but to hear him and then when I actually got to hear the version that he did it was just like it blew me away you know how he was able to bring it into his his place that he sings from uh, was just incredible I was concerned about Flume because of the lyrics and because to me it didn't feel quite right in Peter Gabriel's mouth but then Peter went and uh, and you put a lie to that really by interpreting it in a way that you're really not even aware of it. It just sort of flows and sits beautifully in the track, and so I take take my hat off to him on that one. I think he you know he really overcame that problem and and imbued a kind of a new sense to the lyric and made the song work. I'm not sure if it's the only song. But it's one of the songs where Peter's vocal didn't change from beginning to end at all. Um, because it was just one of those vocals that was just fantastic from the off. It was, I think, one of the early arrangements. And John, because uh, you know, we'd asked for some brass arrangements as well. And it was all brass at that point. And to me, it, it felt a bit weighty and I wasn't completely satisfied and really quite late in the process I thought okay uh, let's try something else and and I just sat down and came up with a really simple piano part for the verses r rather than uh, the brass basses and then uh, it suddenly lifted because you got this contrast with the empty piano and the uh, sort of fat warmth of, of the brass um, again beautiful lines uh, from John and uh, and a lovely lovely song. I know that Peter had used a uh, a brass band, a silver band sound on Father Son, one of his previous tracks, and that we'd talked about the idea of using brass in one way or another. And so I thought, here is a very simple, beautiful song which may work using um, a brass octet. So it's not a full brass sound and it doesn't use the uh, the vibrato that those kind of bands do beautiful sound though that is I wanted the brass wind sound but something that was very pure and didn't get again didn't get in the way of the vocal but was very rich and very warm and very noble as well and then I remember going down to real world and being in with Peter and Peter said look now um, you know I've, I've done something to this track see what you have not tell you anything about it see what you think and so press play and suddenly there was this lovely piano on it which just pulled it all together it was really fantastic and um you know i i, I there may have been a sense that um i think we were still at a process where peter didn't know me that well and and maybe have maybe have thought that i might do one and say you can't how dare you touch my precious arrangement and you know and i've done this and that and you know but um, I'm not like that. I will try and protect things that I think are are worth fighting for. So 
I'm very happy with Flume. Again, it's one of my faves on, on the record, and I'm now a Bonnie Vare fan. <laughs> but it, it was useful not knowing the material and not, you know, it's one of those ones where I didn't have to be, have any preconceived emotional attachment to a record. It's great it, that was really beautiful. No, we're good. We're good. We've got it. That chord was great. And Andy, that was lovely. Just right. I decided to do Come Talk To Me. It was kind of an easy decision because they were there were a lot of songs that I, you know that I that had been important to me of Peter's, but that one was definitely principally the most important, just kind of over the years and and whatnot. Like um, I don't know, through college and things like that, I was a religious studies major, um, and I wasn't I'm not a religious guy uh, at all. But that song was just like this. You know, if there was a religion, it was that song. It was the searching song for me. It was this kind of divine song for real, and and it it was just an easy decision to make. And that it was just like I want to sing that song. I want to I want to relive that song. I guess is is the word I would use. And so like when it happened, it was just like instantaneous. Like well, that's the song I'm gonna do because I've always wanted to do it. I didn't hear his version of Flume before I started working on Come Talk to Me. So now, you know, I'm kind of like racing to like make it half as cool as his um, because it, it was just so stunning what he was able to do. Um, but I'm not going to, uh, you know, I'm not going to outlast Peter Gabriel ever. So I'm, I'm just trying to make it good enough to, to get on the record and, and whatever. But it's, it's pretty fast paced. Like I said, there's like a banjo and some heavier kind of distorted guitars and just trying to bring it to my own kind of divine place where I, from where I first got to know the song, I guess. I kind of just knew what I wanted to do from, from the beginning with Come Talk To Me. Um, so in a way I felt very free just to do, to do what it is. I mean, in, in one regard, I maybe in hindsight, I think I could have gone back and done something much more uh, Bon Iver or something or whatever that means and, and done something much more like ethereal or folky or something. But uh, that's kind of not where I'm at. And it just, uh, it was a song that I wanted to relive in my own way, but through kind of the ride of, and the sonics of Peter Gabriel. So I like, I copied a lot of the drum sounds. My friend Sean and I just, there's like 20 different drum tracks on it. And just like trying to get this like rising, flowing, divine water thing that happens in the song. To, um, but kind of, like I said, through our own eyes, our, our own perspective. somebody with the you know the masterful skill that Peter has over song like this the craft of songs that's what I mean that's what it's about to approach a song like that like flume was a, was written very quickly and it was a it was a big catalyst in my life and like I said it's a big mystery for me is uh, it remains a big mystery to me which is why it's one of my favorite songs to still play it feels like I didn't even really write it but to, to hear Peter sing this song um, it's, it, it, that I was somewhat responsible for. He, he makes, he illuminates certain things in the song that I don't necessarily illuminate with my voice or my perspective. Um, little passages of lyrics or little musical changes, um, you know, that he does with his voice or little chord changes that the arrangement does. It just like, it, it rings the rag out a different way, I guess I would say. And it, what's left is just a different, uh, lesson 
uh, I'm not, I'm not, we're not sure what those lessons are, but that's what kind of the mystery of music is, I guess. And it, it, it's, I'm still just like learning by listening to it. I love hard and will not be denied Till we're both on the same damn side All the barriers blown away